It's our closest star, but in many ways it's still a mystery. The sun has influenced our belief systems, our art, our travel, and of course it's the basis for life on Earth. This show at London's Science Museum looks back at how we used to think about the sun and forwards to challenges like really harnessing its energy with things like solar panels. Going forward with solar energy, we are seeing a lot more technological developments. For the first time, it's actually started to become cheaper than fossil fuels, but we will still need that push from uh, politics and also from the everyday population as well. Zeta was the largest of those early one idea featured here is how scientists have tried to recreate the nuclear reactions that power the sun, known as nuclear fusion. They thought they'd succeeded in the 1950s, but they hadn't. And even with the latest machines like this recent prototype, nobody's managed to get more energy out than what they put in. If fusion on a commercial basis is cracked, um, the results could be uh, game-changing. The uh, amount of energy you can get out from fusing the atoms together is absolutely vast. Millions and millions of times more efficient than the burning of fossil fuels. One of the main messages from this exhibition is the huge variety of ways in which we humans use the sun's movement and its energy for our own benefit. But there's a warning as well. The sun's activities could pose a real threat to our planet, a threat very few people know much about. The sun giving us life, but also bringing danger. It's called space weather, and in particular solar storms, when the sun throws out huge clouds of plasma. As this interactive game shows, the phenomenon can knock out satellites in space and power grids here on Earth. There are things that people are doing. So the Met Office uh, now maintains a 24-hour space weather forecasting centre where they monitor the sun, watching out for the early signs of one of these major storms. And if you get more warning, that means you can warn the people who run the electricity grid, warn satellites, you can ground flights to avoid people getting high doses of radiation at high altitude from one of these things. So we're going up to see the sun up close. Scientists could get more answers fairly soon. A NASA probe set off towards the sun this summer, and in 2020, the European Space Agency launches its solar orbiter. From its vantage point 42 million kilometres from the sun, it could provide clues about what drives the sun's magnetic field. Back here on Earth, the team at the Science Museum are hoping this exhibition will attract a big audience and some stellar reviews. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera, London.